Hey Wizard, so this is just a quick update video on something I've been working on for arbitrage search. And it was actually a comment that was posted on the Code Raiders channel where someone had said, oh, hey, aren't you using a more advanced algorithm for something like the Bellman Ford? And embarrassingly, I had never even heard of it. So I went into a lot of detail and for days and days started programming to see, can I find some kind of edge in triangular arbitrage using this Bellman Ford arbitrage algorithm. And this is just a quick video to update you as to my progress and findings so far by running this on the Binance exchange. Now I'm going to hide my camera so that you can see some of the details on the slides that I'm going to pull up. But nonetheless, this is just a quick video to give you some insights and behind the scenes as to what I'm actually finding running this live in the wild with a bot that should trade them on Binance. And just to head up this video because I don't want to waste anyone's time. There's nothing exciting here that's going to make you tons of money on Binance overnight. That said, I'm very impressed with the actual algorithm itself. So let's get into it. So very quickly, for those of you who just want a quick recap as to how triangular arbitrage works, the goal is to end up with more money than we started with by exploiting price gaps in the market. So for example, on Binance, let's pretend I have USDT and I want to end up with more USDT than I started with. Well, what I could do is swap USDT for Bitcoin at the top of the triangle there, and then I could swap that Bitcoin for Ethereum, and then that Ethereum for USDT, and end up with more USDT than I started with. In this example, 3.8%. And don't worry, I'll take you through the calculation as well so that it's clear. But you don't just have to do a three-way triangular arbitrage opportunity. I could do one, two, three, four swaps. So I could go to BTC, then to ETH, then to LINK, then from LINK to BNB and BNB back to USDT. And I don't have to start with USDT either. This just helps to simplify the example. So the question then becomes, well, what part of the order book do I use here? Because as you know, the more Bitcoin I sell, the worse a price I'm going to get because I'm eating into the order book or the more USDT that I buy, say with Bitcoin, the worse the price I'm going to get because I'm eating into the order book. And so remember, we buy at the asks and we sell at the bids. For those of you who have done the triangular arbitrage course on Udemy, just ignore all the terminology I used in that course for now because I'm simplifying things a lot for this next example. So when I talk about base and quotes and reverse and forward, they actually mean different things in this context. So don't worry if it seems a bit confusing from what you went through. But nonetheless, here we go. So if I have BTC and I want to swap it for USDT, that's a forward trade. And if I have USDT and I want to swap it for BTC, we'll call that a reverse trade. Now USDT we'll call the quote asset and BTC the base asset. Same thing here. USDT is the quote asset. BTC is the base asset. So if I want to do a forward trade and swap BTC for USDT, Remember that if you look at your order book, BTC is the quantity column. So it's a column in the middle of both of these order books, the bids and the asks. And the price is in USDT, which is the quote, we'll call it, right? So that's on the very left-hand column of both of these order books. So if I'm swapping from BTC to USDT on a forward trade, I'm selling my BTC for USDT. And remember, I'm always going to get the worst deal. So the more I sell my BTC, the, the less value I get back in USDT because I eat up the order book and therefore I'm then for or therefore using the bids order book because I'm selling to the bids. I'm a forward trade is selling to the bids and then a reverse trade. I'm actually going to be exchanging my USDT for Bitcoin over here. And because I'm buying Bitcoin, I'm buying at the asks. And remember, the quantity is in Bitcoin here. It's in the base assets, a reverse trade. Here we are buying at the asks. And so that's just how you know how to work through the depth. Because remember, any calculations you're doing, you actually have to pull the order books from the exchange and work out in reality, what price am I really getting for the amount that I am trading? And that's known as the depth of the order book. And that will give us our real arbitrage rate. Now, let's just work through this calculation in a bit more detail, just so everyone's clear. So let's say I start with BTC USDT and I own USDT. Therefore, I'm swapping my USDT for BTC. And that's a reverse trade. The price is at 42,550. And let's say I'm starting with 1000 USDT. So I take my 1000 divided by 42,550. And that will give me 0 0.02350 Bitcoin. So if I 
sold my 1000 or <laughs> I should say I used my 1000 USDT to buy Bitcoin. Then I'm buying at the asks and at the price or I'll call this the weighted average price of 42,550. I end up with 0 0.0235 Bitcoin. Now I've got Bitcoin and I want to swap it for Ethereum. And the price for Bitcoin Ethereum here is 0 0.0515. So the price again is in the quote asset BTC. And I've got 0 0.0230 Bitcoin. I got that from the last trade. So that now comes into play. And I divide that by the price now of ETH BTC. And that means I end up right now with 0.45631 ETH. So in other words, my $1,000 has bought me 0.45631 ETH. Now on the last leg of the trade, I could say, okay, now I've got my ETH. It's now a forward trade because I'm now selling my ETH. I'm selling the base asset. So I'm not buying it. I'm selling it for USDT. And therefore I take my 0.45631 multiplied by 2275 and I'll end up with 1000 and 38 US dollar tether, meaning I made $38 just by exploiting a price gap. So this all sounds very exciting so far. And if we jump ahead over here, we can simplify the calculation to say, if it's a reverse trade, you take one divided by the price. And this is in the context of Binance and how Binance is structuring their symbols and their bids and their asks, by the way. But I take one divided by the price and I multiply that by one divided by the price for the next trade, which was ETH BTC, because that again was a reverse trade. And then the final trade was a forward trade. So then I just multiply by the price. So if it's a reverse trade, you divide one divided by the price, or you, you take one divided by the price to get the price you're going to use, multiplied by each leg of the trade. So this could have you know 10 legs and therefore 10 multiplications over here or 10 legs and nine multiplications, I should say. But there we go. If you do the math here, you'll work out that you get to 1.038, i.e. a 3.8% arbitrage. So then the question becomes, well, where do we find these arbitrage opportunities, Sean? And in fact, if we are going to trade them on Binance, which is like the most competitive crypto exchange in the universe, how are we going to compete with everyone else? Well, this was my thinking. This is what I've been working on. And like I said at the start of the video, I've not got anything here that's going to make you rich overnight. But nonetheless, I did find an algorithm which was recommended by somebody in the comments on the Code Raiders YouTube channel. And that algorithm is the Bellman Ford. And it has, in fact, really helped me to find arbitrage opportunities much faster than looping through all sorts of different assets via other strategies. And so the Bellman Ford, just to put it really simply in simple terms, the way it works is a bit like this. It uses like a graph search structure or algorithm that essentially looks at the cost of each node connected to every other node. Now, in this context, every node could be a cryptocurrency and the connection is the price. So one node could be USDT, the next node Bitcoin and the connection between them would be the price of one to the other. And so what this algorithm does is in, it enables you to very quickly traverse this graph to find out where is there what's known as a negative cycle. In other words, is there a negative cycle where I multiply BTC with link to Solana? And this is just a very, very crude way of explaining the Bellman Ford equation. But if you want more detail, here's what it's actually doing. It's taking that price, but it's taking one minus the log of that price so that it can add all these edges, uh, all these lines that are connecting these nodes. And if you can add them, that's essentially how graph search works and the Bellman Ford works in a particular way. And when you add them, it's the same as multiplying. So just like I showed you the multiplication equation earlier, this is very similar. It's actually just multiplying prices to find, OK, did we hit a negative cycle, i.e. the cost of traveling through all these nodes in the graph? Does it actually end up being negative? And if so, you found an arbitrage opportunity. And so I worked on developing an algorithm that does this and that actually does it then for you know multiple cycles. So you can see, OK, how many possible ways are there that I could arbitrage the whole of Binance right now? And it'll get all the prices from Binance and do that in seconds. And so to do this, you know, you really have two approaches. One, you can just have something periodically, you know, pull the prices from the exchange, you know, structure them in a graph, which happens in split seconds. It's, it's really quick. 
and then traverse them. And I was super surprised at how fast it traverses them. Like math is amazing. I wish I was better at math. I'm not great at math. I wish I was better at it. It's amazing. It works really, really well. So that's one approach you can take. And the other approach you can take is just to have a select set of assets that you pull the order books continually from Binance. So you have a WebSocket connection. I've also done this, by the way. I've also built this as well. You have a WebSocket connection that is constantly listening to the prices. And the minute it detects, okay, there's an opportunity, it then goes and sends the trade for execution. And yes, I have built in the execution part of this as well. And so there's a lot of complexity going on here, but to simplify it, we have something that can watch the market live. We also have something that can do a periodic check. And this is also going to enable us to do execution as well. So when we run that, what do we end up with? And so just to show you in the hours that it's taken me to actually put together this whole video whilst I'm recording here right now live, I said, find me any opportunity above 1.000 one which is terrible it means it's not even one percent because 1 1.0001 is not even a percent and so what i'm trying to do over here is to find okay where is an arbitrage opportunity greater than say 1.015 which would be 1.5 percent and it's only found four opportunities here which were above one meaning they were an actual arbitrage opportunity the cycle so the the whole number of legs in any given trade here were three but it will go up to five it could go up to ten if you set it to and that's basically what it's done so here it's got the surface rate and here it's got the actual uh, real rate over here so here you can ignore the zero at the start and the one so here it starts with usdt and then it ends up with v chain which it swaps for bnb and back to usdt and that's the trade over here so here it would have taken usdt swap for v chain V chain here for BNB and BNB back for USDT. And so that's all it's picked up in the hours that it's taken me to put this video together, which I have to say is very disappointing. But remember, this is doing a periodic check. And if actually I just go to the algorithm, I'm going to stop it running now. So you can see here, every single one of these is where it detected a potential arbitrage. But when it went into the depth of the order book, and it actually pulled the latest prices for the order book, it worked out, no, you would have lost money. So if you had just triangular arbitrage this all on face value, every single one of these, you would have lost money, apart from the ones I just showed you. But when you take into account exchange fees, anyway, you would have lost money. But the point is, if I go and run this, I'm just gonna go and run it here, and you'll notice in a minute, um, it'll start running, and there you go. So every time one of these printouts pops up, it's pulled the prices and traversed every single one of those on the graph to find a potential arbitrage opportunity. And if you've worked with triangular arbitrage before, you'll notice that this is happening very quickly. And also I've got this on a timer to run every half a second. So there's half a second delay on purpose. I could remove that, but I was afraid I was going to impact the Binance API rate limits by doing that. So whilst developing I didn't want to mess with that too much. Now, I told you as well, I could also listen to the prices live. So I built something here that, um, and for those of you on into coding, don't worry about it. Like it's not, it's a non-issue, but I'm listening to these assets over here, right? Just these ones. I'm just picking particular ones because I want to get a live price feed like rapidly and constantly from Binance. And so what I'll do here is I'm going to change this from being a searcher to a listener. And when I do that, it's going to run a different or a different way of extracting prices, but it'll be constant. It'll just be a stream of prices. There's no request to Binance with the prices coming and going. It's just one open, think of it as phone conversation or WebSocket, one open phone conversation happening with Binance all the time, continually. And so what that's going to do is print something out if it actually finds a real arbitrage opportunity within these assets over here. Nonetheless, I've got nothing exciting to report to you. This is the progress so far, but I've been really, really excited by this Bellman Ford uh, equation over here and how that's all working. That's going pretty well at the moment. By the way, this for those of you who are coding junkies like me, this is written in Rust for speed. And also when you're dealing with trading, the more I work with Rust, the more I want to work with it for trading. So, you know, this was written in Rust. And of course, as always, it'll be available at Code Raiders. I'll put a link in the description. So until the next one, take care and talk soon.